looking for a clue as to why. A short film by Kay Slater, 2021. The following short film contains adult language and references to alcohol. Installation team arrives. Artist arrives. Gloves on, plinths out. Artist places the work, showtime approaches. The sun sets, the show opens. You've been looking forward to seeing the show since it was first announced. You usually avoid art openings, but you couldn't wait to see this work. You arrive early to avoid the inevitable crowds that this show will attract. You're not great with crowds. You had a mild panic attack at the last event you attended. Your heart pounds at the memory. You hope that by arriving early, you'll be able to get in and out fairly quickly. Deep breath. You're going to be OK. There are only six works to view. You move through the exhibition with purpose. Wait. Where's the exit? They speak as they approach, asking questions without pause. I thought it was you. How are you? It's been too long. I've been so busy. Can you even with this work? I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but who am I to say what is art or not? They never pause, but their gaze stays locked on your face. You perceive a smirk. It reminds me of the last time I was in Italy, and I mean, I did see so much amazing art there that it's really not fair to compare this local stuff. They stop mid-sentence and turn.
The ghost of a frown passes over Mix White's face and is quickly replaced by an overly bright smile. Oh, hello, Mix Peacock. It's been so long since I... Indeed it has. It's been far too long. How do you do? How do you do? But didn't I see you at last month's Nuit Blanc? Oh, yes. After the third or fourth event, they all seem to blend together. You are, of course, quite correct. Are you acquainted with... No, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Mix White raises an eyebrow and gestures towards you. Mix Peacock nods slightly, but continues to speak with Mix White. Then what have you been up to since I saw you last month, Mix White? Oh, I've been traveling, and only recently returned from... You are not required any longer. You take the opportunity to step away. You make your escape to the washroom. Your breathing slows. You plot your path to the front door. Exit. Right. Right. Left. Front door. You can do this. You both seem surprised as you bump into each other, but they recover first. Oh, hello there. Look at you. You really put yourself together well tonight. Their eyes seem to travel the length of your body before returning to your face. They put their hand on the small of your back and with gentle but firm pressure, they direct you towards the nearest exhibit. I'm delighted that they were able to use this old heritage space. Too many unused buildings in this city. You respond in the affirmative, repeating back an opinion that you think reflects how you feel about the use of heritage space. You watch them place their wine glass on the plinth. Don't put that there. Yes, I agree. Those are exactly my thoughts. They continue talking, but you're having trouble focusing on anything other than the precariously perched wine glass. I thought I might see you here. It really is an excellent show. Tell me, when might I be attending an event where I can see your work? You feel their breath against your cheek. Do you do studio tours? Hello over there. Another voice calls out to you. Could I borrow them for a minute, Mix Green? Thanks. Oh, yes, of course. I'll talk to you again later tonight. They reach out their arm towards you, palm up. As you move towards them, they nod, smiling at Mix Green, and turn to walk you towards the next closest exhibit. Oh, I thought that was You hear them yes, call out yes, to someone no, else, and their voice fades bit. into the murmur of the crowd as you move away. Mix Plum turns to look at the exhibit and calmly stands beside you. Mix Plum does not speak, but smiles at you when you look at them. After a few minutes, they turn to you and say, I like this one the most because it feels like the artist tried something different here. If you read the didactic, you'll learn that they wove their own rope here. All of the other pieces were fabricated to order. It gives this piece more dimension, whether intentional or not. Mix Plum faces you while sharing their thoughts, but their body remains focused and positioned towards the artwork. You share an observation about the candlestick and encourage them to check out that piece next. They share a few more observations about the piece, 
but after a few minutes, they turn fully to face you. Have you made your way through the exhibition? You were here when I arrived. Are you okay getting home after this? You confirm that you've seen the entire show and that you are okay to get home and thank them for their concern. You ask the same of them. Yes, me too. I took the bus. Thank you. I have a few more pieces to check out, but I did tell Miss Peacock I would say hello before leaving. I think I noticed you chatting with them before. You exchange a few more polite words, but when the conversation reaches a natural stopping point, they excuse themselves and tell you that they were glad to bump into you. As they walk away, you notice the path to the front foyer is clear. Your phone begins to ring. The room's volume seems to ebb for a moment, and you can feel people looking at you. You fumble at it to turn it to silent, but the damage is done. You spy Mick Scarlet across the room and lock eyes with them. Your phone buzzes. You look down and check, shuffling towards the door. Did you come tonight? I've been looking all over for you. Don't leave without saying hello, okay? You look up to see your exit blocked. Mick Scarlet is grinning and is gesturing animatedly towards you for the gathered crowd. I just have to introduce you. Their website is just amazing. We are so lucky to have caught you before you snuck away. I was just telling my friends about how amazing your work is. Everywhere you look are teeth and wrinkles. Gazes bounce between you and Mick Scarlet. You focus on Mick Scarlet's chin and mouth. I was sure you'd be here tonight. You're always at the best events in town, and you're always at the 3D shows. You do love a good sculpture, am I right? You nod and return the smile. It makes your cheeks hurt. You can feel the exit as it stands blocked by this group of admirers and groupies. And your outfit tonight? So delightful. You have such a gift. I wish I could look as good as you at these things, but I always panic when it... You say something generically kind about Mick Scarlet's outfit. They wave their hand at your compliment and continue, smiling. I was telling Mick's Mustard earlier tonight that I knew you'd show up wearing something trendy and cool, and they agreed with me. You nod again, still smiling, not needing to contribute to the conversation and unable to bring it to an end. The last time they were at an event, they wore this amazing black and white outfit. I couldn't even wear it. You stop translating information and the voices, noises, compliments, lies, words, smells, thoughts, body heat, dry air, panic, and anticipation turn into static. You can feel your face still holding a smile that feels unnatural and ugly. Your scalp aches. Hey. Hey. Are you all right? Mick Scarlet snaps back into shape, as do the others in the group. A mix of concern and discomfort can be seen in their faces. You're really looking unwell. Here, sit down. They begin to move you towards a couch. The crowd parts to make room for you. You mumble about the start of a sudden migraine and gesture towards the door. Oh my god, you poor thing. And I've just been going on and on. Let me call you a cab. Or mix mustard drove. They could give you a ride. The path to the door is now clear and is sharply prominent in your vision. You decline the ride and the cab and mumble an apology as you stumble towards the door. Okay, take care. Please text me or mix mustard when you get home so we know you're safe. And then you're outside. You head home on foot. You play the evening back in your head.
Nothing particularly bad happened, even though it was stressful at the time. You desperately wanted to escape, but from what exactly? You take a deep breath and tally the night's events. Mix White approached you and wanted to talk about the artwork. Mix Peacock was uninterested in talking with you, and while it felt odd, they didn't waste your time with small talk. Mix Green shouldn't have touched you without your permission, and it was pretty disrespectful to put wine on an art piece. Mix Plum saw you were uncomfortable and helped you move away from that situation. They gave you time to compose yourself and showed a genuine interest in the artwork. Mix Mustard wanted to see you and asked others to help ensure they would get the chance. Mix Scarlet genuinely wanted to talk to you and about your work. They were so fond of your style as to discuss it with other people. In each situation, although you felt uncomfortable, people approached you. It was their choice. There's no way to separate public events from people. There are ways to cope and learn to better navigate social situations, but it takes practice. You decide to text Mix Scarlet when you get home and tell them that you'll reach out to Mix Mustard tomorrow. I'm so glad you were able to make it home, okay? I hope your head feels better soon. Maybe we can attend the next event together? Maybe. Next time.